Okay, we are live. Um, so uh, we like to touch on uh, the topic of um, billing, um, especially since we have so many new faces, but also just as a good reminder for people that have been with us for, for a while. And uh, Janine pointed out uh, that she saw some uh, you know consistent misunderstandings of what we bill for, how we bill, and, and why we bill. Um, so before, um, I'm going to have uh, Janine kind of uh, um, get into the technicalities of the billing process. I just want to kind of discuss it on a macro level and to explain why uh, billing is so critical. The obvious reason that it's critical is for um, the compensation that it that it affords the company and also the managers, the managers that are uh, really diligent with their billing um, and uh, make sure that they uh, fill fill out those invoice forms as appropriate. Um, they they make quite a bit extra money, you know, in the range of ten to twenty percent over their their base salary. So it, it definitely um, adds up. Um, but the money is not the not the only thing. It's also a uh, protection mechanism because, as we all know, um, boards. You know they want you know caviar on a on the walmart budget and they will do whatever they can whenever they can to get as much out of you as they possibly can um even if it's not inside the contract um, as managers um, we have a, a bad habit of accepting this we have a bad habit of not creating uh boundaries early um sticking to those boundaries having difficult conversations, having to be a little bit uncomfortable from time to time as you kind of just steal yourself and, and put on your poker face and say, yes, I'm happy to do that, but it's outside of our contract and it's going to be X amount of dollars or it's going to be approximately this many hours. Um, but it's really important because what it does is it assigns a cost to your time. And so one of two things will happen. Either A, the board will find a, uh, um, a another way to accomplish their goals that perhaps doesn't involve your time, or B, you will take on that task and get compensated for your time. So all of those are good things. Um, but to me, in order to, to manage the job, you really do need to make sure that the that the billing is is a tool used to keep your boards honest so that they don't try to use too much much of your time and again that means um ha you know having those uncomfortable conversations i know nobody likes to do it everybody just wants to kind of uh go ahead and do everything make their boards happy but it doesn't do your it doesn't do you any favors and it certainly doesn't do the next manager any favors you know sarah has commented previously how she's come on to accounts that were previously managed by somebody else and found that there was no extra billing. And so now she has to retrain them and, 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 you know, help explain the contract and you know, really kind of, you know, make things a little bit more difficult than they need to be just to get them back on track. And if she doesn't do it, she's missing out on additional compensation. And also she's um, spending too much time on these individual accounts. So that's that's kind of the big picture of why why it's uh, so important. We are, in fact, a for profit business. You all want to maximize your earning potential. So and we we also want to protect our time. Um, so with that, um, unless there are any uh, questions or comments, I'd like to hand it over to uh, Janine. Five, four, three, two, one. Take it on, Janine. All right. Hi, guys. Um, I am assigned to um, train on extra billing. So um, I, I, if anyone's on a phone, it, it's going to be kind of a hard presentation to follow. So I just wanted to let you know. Hi, everyone. I miss you. Um, anyways, um, so. Janine, Janine yeah. just, just to comment on that, that's why I'm recording it. And, and this will be available okay. on, on the YouTube channel. Okay. Wonderful. 
Um, so the first place I always start with extra billing is our management contracts. Um, every association is different, so you should know the ins and outs of your contract. Um, every year, uh, Collins Management sends out a, basically a disclosure of what of our, all of our fees are for that upcoming fiscal year. Um, and so that is sent, um, you know, actually the 2022 fee schedule isn't in our Z drive. So I'm just gonna show you what uh, the fee schedule for 2021 looks like. Can I have um, sharing accessibility here? Can I do that? Is it sharing? Hmm. Not yet. Not, do I have share controls, Paul? You're muted, Paul. I've, I've never been in a Google Drive meeting where permissions were necessary to. Um, okay, let me to see. share. But what I can do okay, is let I can me just, see. I could share it on my side if necessary. Oh, there we go. Can you guys see that? It's coming. It's coming up. Yep. Okay. So this is um, what I call is uh, exhibit A and it's normally at the end of all of our management contracts. And every year Collins Management also sends this out to all of our boards. Um, at the bottom of this is where essentially- Janine, yeah. Janine, I just wanna make one correction. We, we don't send this out to all of our boards every oh. year. In the disclosure, all we do is specify any changes. Um, okay. the reason the reason we don't send it to everybody is because there are some associations some larger ones that have negotiated different prices on like copies and stuff like that so it'd just be such a headache to send to send a custom version to every client all i do is i just notify them of any changes any changes gotcha okay um so this section on the bottom is where we um in our contracts or if they have this addendum where we charge um for extras so um we charge a rate of 140 an hour uh this is for the most common ones are um meeting overtime, uh insurance claims uh committee assistance uh, those are the three areas where I tend to do the most billing, but you could see there's a whole list of items that um, you um, and sh should be extra billing for. So I'm going to stop sharing on that screen. Hey, Janine, can you bring that back up? I, I would just mm -hmm. like to get into a little bit more of the minutia on that. <laughs> okay. Right. Let me bring that back up. Hold on. There you go. Is it up now? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so yeah, so uh, fundamentally, um, what this what this is, is um, the fee that we charge for anything that's outside of our, our contract. And we try to make our contracts as inclusive as possible. But there's some things that we can't predict some things that we know are going to happen but maybe they only happen every five years or every 10 years so it doesn't make sense to include it in the in the base fee um so i just kind of wanted to go over some of these things that are that are listed so the big catch-all is anything outside of our management contract um and what, what i describe uh, describe as non-routine major projects it, there there can be um a, a lot of inter there's a lot of room for interpretation there um, but generally what, what I'm including in that is any sort of replacement item. So like roof replacement, siding replacement, anything that's going to come up in your, in your, uh, reserve, reserve study. Um, administration of new policies, we always have, uh, uh, new laws that come out that require some, some level of, of adherence to, and it takes our time to, um, um, implement these for our various associations. So if there's a new policy that comes out, what we do is we charge extra our time dealing with that policy. However, when you go into your uh, budget process for the following year, um, you should factor that in to, to the price because you know it's going to be something that you're, you're going to have to go do on a go forward basis. It's no longer going to be a new, new thing that we have to do. Um, so it should be factored into the base fee after the first year. Obviously, any extra meetings, you can look at your management agreement to see how many meetings you're supposed to supposed to attend. Um, as Janine said, meetings in excess of two hours. 
Um, and I think uh, a lot of managers will, you know, 30 minutes before the end of the two hours kind of give everybody a little heads up. Hey, you know, we've got 30 minutes left. Um, just wanted to let you know, um, because after two hours, uh, the, the, the clock comes back on. And, and Paul, uh, to tag on to that, uh, you should let go of your manager assistant. So um, I always let them log off the meeting or leave the meeting at that two hour mark. And it's mm -hmm. also helpful um, in with the board seeing a physical presence of saying, hey, yeah. we're being charged right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a it's a good way to kind of send that message and also um, protect the time of the um, the ACAMs and MITs uh non-routine legal matters so you know if you got to get a, a legal opinion from your attorney on some issue brought before the board that's not what you would uh bill for um you would bill for any sort of like uh litigation um some sort of any sort of like legal action where a homeowner is brought some action against the association which requires us to get um you know the attorneys involved but it doesn't include just routine legal opinions yeah, um, and this the next things they don't happen very often, but obviously if you have to go to court hearings, depositions, any sort of anything like that, that's all that's all built for extra. Any sort of emergency and or disaster management, we haven't had a lot of that. But you know, if if let's say for example there was a regional earthquake or something along those lines or a major fire, it could very well be that um, we're you know you know putting in a lot of extra effort and time to protect our clients. <clears throat> Um, after hours emergencies, uh, again, that's something that uh, whenever you're on call, any call you get is is billable. And um, unlike, and Janine will get into how you how you claim your share of the extra billing, but for after hours emergencies, we do not require that you show evidence that they have actually been paid. And yesterday, or I think it was yesterday, Sue had sent a um, on call procedures. Um, so review that email that she sent you because um, then it'll connect you to the forms that you'll need to complete uh, for uh, the to calculate those billing hours. Because um, I'm not going to go over that today. Okay. Yeah. Administering bank loans and special assessments. As a side note, if you have a special assessment for any of your associations, you should have a subfolder on the Z drive under that association called special assessment. Um, that would make Lonnie very, very happy, and it would make me very happy as well. Uh, so that's a kind of like a little side thing that was brought up earlier today. Um, yeah, so uh, administration of elections outside the scope of our management agreement. Obviously, we're not serving as inspectors of elections anymore, but to the extent that we have to administer that process, um, gather ballots and all that, that should be all billed for um, construction defect. That doesn't come up very often. Um, discovery on the association's acts prior to the original commencement of the management agreement. That basically means uh, if we have to fix or reconstruct or rebuild anything that was not done, should have been done by the previous management um, company, then we would bill for that as well. Um, and then any meetings uh, that are on the weekends or Fridays or after 10 p.m. are charged at double time. It's all yours, Janine. Okay. Um, are there any questions on what we could extra bill for? And then I will get into um, the time investment portion, how how I do it, how I calculate my time, and things like that. Awesome. No questions. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing. Um, when I have a project that will require a lot of my time, um, I, ha I use what's called a time investment sheet. It's just a simple Excel spreadsheet um, that has the date, description of work, and then I calculate the minutes. I know Dean sometimes um, has an app that he uses that um, might be a little... Um, I, I don't use an app. I personally love spreadsheets, so I use um, an Excel spreadsheet, and I'll, I'll share that with you. Because um, I also put other notes in in there. Um, I'm going to show you what my insurance uh, claim uh, time investment spreadsheet looks like. This is one I did for Metro Walk West. Um, you know, it just has the date. Um, I'll um, report from the points I received the call regarding the incident, and then it just um, at the bottom what I always do too because. 
if I'm if I'm having to communicate with homeowners and different insurance reps, I'm just going to put all that information on the sheet. Um, and it'll calculate at the end what the total minutes are. And then um, this is, you know, you're going to want to save this because at the end of the day, you're going to need to invoice for those minutes. I normally find an easy cutting off place for, for an insurance claim. It's easy. You could do it when you get payment for the adjust from the adjuster or you can, um, you know, you can do it monthly. It's, it's entirely up to you how you're going to bill your association for the time on task. This is just how I do it um, using an Excel spreadsheet because um, sometimes boards will ask um, time on task. Um, when I get those total minutes, I just use the basic Collins Management invoice form and I complete um, and then I submit it to Savannah for processing. That's an and, excellent system. Thank um, you for creating that. I've never seen that. Oh, no problem. Um, yeah, that's, it's, it's a great system, um, especially for, uh, you know, projects that drag out over the course of weeks or months. Quite often, it's just things that are uh, one-offs. You know, you, you uh, are going to get them done really quickly. Yeah. I, su I suggest keeping that invoice form always open on your screen. And when you do those tasks that require extra billing and aren't these long extended projects like the one uh, Janine just shared, do the invoice form right then and there. Get it done ASAP because you don't want to have to rely on your memory to uh, um, to to remember to bill. Um, just get it done. Send it to Savannah. Don't don't even uh, think twice about it. And also, the longer it takes for these invoices to to trickle in, the more resistance you're going to get from your board because their their memories are going to get hazy. And if if you try to bill for some 20 minute project that happened four months ago, they're going to like, what is what is this? I don't remember this. And then then you're kind of getting back into that uncomfortable conversation realm that we you want to you want to avoid if possible. One of the ways that I do that is when I complete a copy mail form. So everyone's aware that when you send like a print job off to the Novas, um, maybe you had to um, help someone out or help an association out with like a, a rules amendment. So on, when I'm sending out like that 28 day review comment, or even if you send out the results, what, at whatever stage you choose, I will integrate in there and, and I'll put a star by it. Please bill for rules assistant special management rate one hour. And so that's a really easy way to make sure that that gets on the Collins management invoice and that you, you guys get paid for that work for that time investment, because the Novas have to still create an invoice um, based off of their labor, based off the, the printing. And that's just, it's, it's a little bit faster than having to create a separate um, invoice form for your time. So um, that's, that's another way. Um, also, I think we forgot to mention that newsletter authoring, um, you also get paid for. Um, so I am, um, since we are, in the middle of sending out like year-end financials for a lot of associations, um, that's a great opportunity to add an extra page or two in your uh, newsletter disclosure. Yeah. I have a question about that. So um, for the how Sue creates the newsletters for year-end and budget, um, we I just want to confirm we only bill for the pages that we author, correct? Number one. Mm -hmm. Um, and if there's, I've had some boards that, um, redo the newsletter quite a bit. So it lands up like half a page plus one plus, you know, there hasn't been an issue with how I built for that so far. Um, but is there any feedback on that? So like if the, so you create a two page newsletter and I land up using like a page and a half of that, and then it gets altered and customized and I add a page. Just use your best judgment. Okay. And that's um, what I've been doing, and it seems fine. I just what, sure yeah. what I've also done too is I had um, Sue relabel it on the invoice, giving her specific instructions. Um, for instance, if it's a three, our template is a three-page newsletter, right? But put it as the year-end disclosure 
um, you know, pack it or, or labor. So just rename it um, rather than um, having, because because we should charge a fee and, and we do, just our fee is in the, uh, the newsletter per se, uh, it's folded into that. So it just needs to be re, re presented a different way to the boards. And I found that uh, for some, it's a little bit more receptive. Can I, can I add something? Um, when I'm billing for projects, I uh, do, I keep a spreadsheet for each of the projects, similar to what Janine does. And I always include it with the billing form that I send to Savannah because that, that will often answer the questions before they're asked as to what went into the work because that's attached to their invoice. Yeah, definitely do that. That's excellent, excellent advice. Yeah, and you'll have to remind Savannah to um, attach the um, like the time investment sheet there. Okay. So she knows. Um, the uh, the topic of newsletters is uh, kind of near and dear to my heart. I think they're super, super important for um, morale um, because if you don't, if you're not sending newsletters to your um, associations, you're missing out on so much. One, you're missing out on uh, the bill, the billing, which can also be billed by, you know, assistant managers, managers in training. This is something that uh, this is something that can be done by multiple people if they have the requisite writing skills. Um, but also you're just making your job a lot easier as far as management because you are pushing out to the community important information and you're also letting them know all of the things that you've accomplished. The purpose of the newsletter is not to do a lot of, you know, finger wagging and 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 calling homeowners out for not putting out their trash cans. That's not what it's about. What it's about is building community. It's about bragging on behalf of your of the board members, letting the homeowners know all the great things that the board is doing. So when I was when I was in the meeting, um, I would put a when I was writing my notes, I'd put a star next to anything that uh, was going to be a newsletter article. Um, actually I didn't, I put a star against anything that was supposed to be an action item. I forgot what I used to do for newsletters, but I've somehow designated as a newsletter item. Um, and then in the meeting, I would say, oh, that would be a good newsletter article. Then I would write a note. So the board knows in the meeting that the meeting is the, is the process to generate newsletter articles. It's also the process to kind of keep the conversation moving. So things are kind of moving on, moving on people. Uh, Board members are spending too much time complaining about s some aspect or wanting to get the word about uh, word out on something. That's when you say, "Oh, that would be an excellent newsletter article." Same thing with agenda items, and these should all be on your punch lists. And for those of you that are putting your punch lists on uh, Google Sheets, kudos to you because then they can be shared in real time with your boards, which which they really appreciate. If we're done on billing, I'm going to use the final uh, few minutes. That's, there's one more form I'm going to show. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, so every quarter you can claim your extra billing. How we do this um, on the Z Drive All uh, folder, it's called Company Forms and Policies. There should be an all a salary request for extra billing. Um, how you're going to, you're going to pull up the spreadsheet. I will show it to you right now. So on the spreadsheet at the top, you'll see the stuff we reviewed at the beginning of the meeting, what kind of stuff you can extra bill for. There's additional, um, things that you can bill for. Um, I didn't know about this one. I discovered this when I opened this new form. Um, and then you start plugging it in. You put your, your name, request date. Um, you're going to pull the invoice number, uh, description of the work, the amount, check number, and paid. Where do you get this? You get it from Strongroom. So you have to go into Strongroom and you would pull up the Collins management invoice for, let's say, 1310 Creekside. Um, and you, would, you just have to basically plug in all of this information into uh, the sheet. It self-calculates for you on, you know, what you um, are going to get in your next paycheck. Um, with This is basically the cover sheet, and behind that cover sheet are going to be copies 
of all of these invoices so that Paul knows that they were invoiced um, and then eventually paid. Well, so some, sometimes you're sitting on these invoices for a long time while bugging your boards to get the check number and paid. So yeah. it's and on you to keep track of that. Yeah, these are these are supposed to be submitted uh, quarterly, but honestly, I, I I don't stick to that. You know, whenever you submit it is fine, um, and they they tend to kind of just trickle in throughout throughout the the you know the year at ran, at random times. So don't worry about the the um, quarterly submittal process. Um, also, don't you know you don't have to you know uh, attach excessive paperwork just something simple indicating that it's that it's paid and then what i do is i do a, a random sampling to verify i don't go through each one to, to verify each one so a lot of it's on the the honor system um but before we did it before we had this process of of it being paid and verification there were there were quite a few uh requests for extra billing for things that turned out weren't even billed for so it, we, we had to add this uh, component to it, even though it is a little bit of a hassle. And so th there's the total amount that was billed and the manager <clears throat> is basically entitled to half of it. Um, the equation does 45% and that's because there are employee taxes involved and the company pays approximately 5% of those employee taxes. So we do deduct that. But it is sent, and then the other five percent gets pulled out of your payroll um, automatically. So that's why it's forty-five percent and not fifty. It actually, if it was fifty, uh, we would end up paying um, the co the company would end up paying those em employee taxes. Um, and then it's automatically uh, broken up between what part goes into your bonus and what part goes into your SEP IRA. Yeah, and so um, I know I touched lightly on the on-call um, minutes or. Uh, billings. Um, so this is one we don't have to put the invoice number. Um, we have to put the description and the amount. There is a form on Google Drive that helps you track it. Um, it does not line up to this, so you have to manually enter um, what your your on call for your on call billings. Um, and then there's one more area where you do get. Um, uh, some extra billing income, and that's through project management referral fees. So these are large projects that um, maybe a manager might not be as seasoned to take on or might just suck up a whole bunch of time. Um, but we have a, a wonderful construction management department um, headed by Dean. And so you could send over, I mean, he, he's handling all the SB 326 projects, those are the deck and balconies, um, but also, uh, and, and sewer laterals, um, but also he can handle some, you know, some menu, maybe you need a five-year uh, sprinkler inspection. <laughs> um, so he he managed that one for me um, at Metro Walk. And so this is where you can claim the 5% on those fees. There is another spreadsheet for that. Um, it's uh, there's a separate separate spread that calculates the five percent. I am still looking for it in the all Z company forms uh, portion. So maybe if Dean or Sue can upload it there, um, but that's where all of our company forms and policies and fun stuff should be housed. Um, I couldn't find I, it there. Maybe it's somewhere else. Sorry. Can, can I add to that? Um, actually, um, when uh, so for projects that are not required to be sent to me, the ones that are required to be sent to me by Paul um, are the EEE projects, the SB 326 inspections, the sewer laterals, and water intrusion insurance claims. Um, so those um, don't get split up with that 5%, but anything else that you send me, I keep a ledger. That's probably the form that you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. So every time I bill for one of these projects, um, I um calculate it with uh, that five percent taken out on my re my salary request for extra income and then i put it into a ledger with your name on it and then when you're ready to bill um you let me know and i just send it to you um with every invoice oh, great we don't have to track that then you or we we just track it to the extent that we so again if the invoices have been paid but I, my uh 
I'm sorry, I missed that. You're 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 kind of glitching in and out, Dean. Uh, but to, uh, to recap what he said, he he's tracking uh, the five percent, and uh, you, upon request, he could provide that to you, and then it just that number just inserts directly into that form. Even I, even that. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. I was just going to add to the on call billing. I thought you were through. I'm through. <laughs> okay. I just want to make a distinction real quick. I'm going to share my screen. Um, <clears throat> there are all your faces. So on on Google Drive, there's an on -co on call log for billing. Um, as you can see, I just filled out my my last on call billing on here, and Savannah goes in here and then bills the association for for these charges. And there are two two sections: one to be billed, and this section down here are things that have already been billed. Um, so if you need to go back and reference this, you can. After, after you've done this, you take this information and you plug it into your extra billing sheet, and that's what you s send to Paul. This is what will build the association. So I just want to remind everyone to use this, this sheet. Yeah, really all you need to do is uh, on, on the um, extra billing reimbursement form, just add a line item on call billing, with the total, the grand total of the amounts, and then attach that spreadsheet, and I'll be satisfied. Can can I raise my hand and be? Can, I am. I'm sorry. I'm absolutely lost. There are so many steps to this, mm -hmm. and it, I'm just lost. And then when I look on the form, it has all these things that you can bill for. It's to me, it's confusing. So I mean, I haven't. I sent in a couple of invoices, but I haven't gone past that because there's so many different steps. I've never <laughs> done this many, many steps. So uh, I, is this written out somewhere how to do the extra billing and find all this stuff? And Well, we have, we recorded, I'm recording this session and there is a line item on your training spreadsheet on this topic and you are free and encouraged and asked and begged to go to the name associated with that topic and ask for additional training on uh, not only this but on any on anything that you need training on um, I, I i will say some of the um some of the videos need to be updated like i was trying to do a meeting set up a ring meeting and when i looked at the video what i saw was nothing of like what i was looking at the screen because ring had been updated is what i'm told mm -hmm. so some of these videos and who did you who, who did who did you advise when you saw that well, I I just mentioned it to the people in the Walnut Creek office, and they said to mention it to you. And then we were talking, but you had to go, so there are some things that I didn't get finished talking to you about. <laughs> okay, so yeah, send me an email and stuff like that. Let's try to keep this um, conversation related to billing since it is being okay. recorded. Um, yeah, I would be your point of contact for any extra billing things. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the vast majority of things on that create an invoice form are you're not going to have to deal with. That's generally the Nova's like copies, postage, you know, a lot of stuff the accounting department deals with. The main thing that you're going to be concerned with is your hourly rate. Yeah, so like post like copies that'll get calculated by the Nova's and when they do the mailings, they do all those calculations and it's it's not something that you'll have to be you'll have to deal with very often. <clears throat> but they are things that, that get billed for, so they need to be on that spreadsheet. All right. Um, also, uh, while we have some time, I wanted to share uh, my screen. And remind everybody about this very, very critical, important uh, document. <clears throat> and this is the uh, manager description document. And uh, it really answers a lot of the questions uh, that I commonly get asked about uh, um, the company culture, the training regimen, philosophy behind it. Why do we do it this way? Why don't we do it that way? A lot of it is answered here. Also in this document is the detailed description 
of you know what a manager does manager in training manager and assistant and what they need to do in order to be uh successful um so you get into these things and um you know generally when when i have a struggling manager i can go through the these this little checklist and these are the things something on this list usually multiple things on this list aren't happening however if these things are being followed then you will be a successful uh, manager and then you got the manager must do's and these are just like critical um components of of doing our job and every every uh manager that has um that we've terminated um in the last couple of years has violated many many of these things so i just always want to remind people about this about this document uh, because it does include quite a bit of uh information about um your job billing training um communication how we communicate um all sorts of things so i just whenever i have an opportunity um i like to remind people about this if you um i it, it's i've included it now in the in the new hiring um package which is done through heartland it's all automated so that's that's great but if anybody hasn't seen this in some time and would like me to send it to you please let me know or it's uh on the the z drive as well and that's all i have uh janine i really appreciate um your your help with this this presentation and uh presenting this information before we say our goodbyes does anybody have any any questions or comments about billing or or anything else related to management um my uh internet cut out um actually in the middle of the time that i was speaking about the ledger that i keep for that five percent so if anybody has questions about that just let me know and i'll explain it offline all right thank you dean appreciate it um perhaps when this recording's done i'll, I'll send everybody um a link to that recording and then if anybody uh, has any sample documents spreadsheets anything that they'd like to share just do a reply all to that email and and then everybody will have uh everything there and i'll, and I'll also add the the manager description document that i referenced as well all right thanks everybody it's good seeing your face see you next week bye. thanks bye. everyone bye bye bye